good to see everybody. That, everybody made it out this morning. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. The roads weren't bad, but it did get cold out there. I feel like I'm back up in Michigan. But anyway, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was just thinking a few minutes ago, you know, we, uh, 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 you know, we, we come in and we take some time to worship like this. And we could, we could you know, we, we kind of hit a place where we could spend the whole morning doing that. And that would be good. And, you know, somebody might think, well, yeah, but, you know, we came, we came to pray. Well, think about this. Think about this. If you go back over um, when Paul wrote, we, we may get to this in a little bit, but when Paul wrote to the Ephesians and he said, uh, praying always with all prayer and supplication, praying always with all prayer, praying always with all prayer, all manner of prayer, all kinds of prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto and so on. But, uh, he, you know, you notice he made a differentiation in there, praying always with all prayer, all, one translation says all manner of prayer, another says all kinds of prayer. And supplication is interesting. He separated those two out. He got all kinds of prayer and all kinds of supplication. Um, I, I like a friend of mine said one time, he said he was praying about some things. And he said, the, the Lord, the Holy Ghost spoke up on the inside of him and said, quit being so technical. He said, you get so technical, you miss the spirit of what I'm doing. And I thought, you know, when it comes to prayer, there's certain things that we will teach, do teach, going to teach. But you might hear somebody from some another location might teach it a whole different way. Well, who's right? Probably both. Because when you get to the subject of prayer, there's a whole lot to learn. And a lot of times I think we get where we've, we've, got, all, we've got all of our ducks in a row. So we're, we, we've got all the answers for something. And like I heard myself say years ago, I said, sometimes people, they're gonna, they want to go to the nation when they get all their ducks in a row. I said, you ought to take your ducks out there, line them up and shoot them, and then go to the nation. But, uh, but anyway, but anyway, um, but I said that to say, some, if we don't watch it, we get so technical. And so when we begin to teach certain things, it isn't that we've got all the answers. We lay something out there, but we don't want to get so technical, we miss what the Spirit of God's doing. Well, what was this? And, you know, I've noticed that with spiritual gifts. You know, you, you look at uh, you look at the man at the gate called beautiful. Was that gifts of healings? Was that special face? Was that working in miracles? I don't know. The guy got healed. Yeah. You know? And again, if we get so technical, and we can do that in our services. We, well, you know, what was that? What was that? I don't know, but something good happened. And I think you know, sometimes we better back up from being so technical and just let God do what he does and figure out later maybe what it was. And if we never figure it out, it's not going to hurt anything. But anyway, um, when you, you go back through and, and um, like I said, over in uh, Ephesians 6.18 where Paul wrote and he said, uh, praying always with all prayer, all kinds of prayer, all manner of prayer and supplication in the spirit. And I'm going to come back to that, I think, in a minute. But, uh, um, you know, he said, praying always. And he separated prayer from supplication, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Well, you know, then you go back over where we were yesterday morning, I guess it was, in uh, 1 Timothy 2, 1, where, where Paul wrote to Timothy, and he said, I exhort therefore, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and those that are in authority, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all Godliness and honesty are all freedom of religion, high moral standards. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God who would have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge. But now notice back there, again, he said, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers. Notice he, he put the word prayers in there with supplication, but yet different than supplication. And I think sometimes we think, well, you know, prayer, prayer meetings just get in there and get on our knees and pray in other tongues. Well, if you go back through, um, I'm not a Greek scholar by any means, but I'm pretty good with the Strong's, and you go back through there, and if you look that up in the Strong's, the word prayer also means the word worship. So when we're worshiping, we're praying. So we've already got 20 minutes in praying this morning. Because worship, I don't know that you can separate worship from what we think is prayer. I think worship is what gets us into a position to go into other kinds of prayer, but um, I don't know, some of us have been talking about it, and the Holy Ghost has been stirring us about it, but I believe there's a realm of worship that's coming in. Yes. Yes. I believe there's a realm of uh, uh, fresh worship. Yes. How do I word this? Not thrown off on anything where we have been, but yet being prepared for where we're headed. Um, you know, I'll take a side trip here for a minute. That's the way these just go. But, um, you know, going back through there... Um, you notice, now, I don't know, you know, this, this, the, the story, what came first, the chicken or the egg, I don't know. 
So I'm not sure where everything started, but, you know, you go back through and, and uh, uh, you go back to early Pentecost, back around the, the turn of the last century, and, and they had their own music. They had hymnals, etc., but they had their own music. And then you, then you go from there, you, you get into the healing revival, and the healing revival had its own music, okay? I mean, I can, I can hear, you know, different ministers right now. Maybe I'll hear them online or hear something of some individuals. I, some I know personally, some I don't. But you hear the music in their meetings, and you go, I know where they came out of. They came out of the healing move. And then you go a little further, and then, and then here, comes the, uh, here comes the charismatics. That's us. Got rid of the hymnals, got rid of everything, just got somebody with an acoustic guitar and a storefront and, and took out the, the psalms and just started singing those. And, and all of a sudden, we've got a, we've got a whole new realm of music, but we had music for the, the uh, Pentecostal outpouring, Azusa. We had music for the healing revival. We had different music for the charismatic move. And then here comes, here comes we Word of Faith people, and God raised up Brother David Ingalls. And uh, I, I've never seen any music anywhere that's any more word-based. We talked to somebody or heard from somebody the other day that said they just really needed to hear some words, so they, they just dug out David Ingalls' old music. Got a whole series of David Ingalls. Why? Because you know if you're listening to that, you're feeding your faith. And so the Word of Faith teaching revival, God raised up a whole new realm of music. And here we are again. We're branching out. We're coming into something. We're coming into a move of God. We're coming into an outpouring of the glory. And I don't know what's going to come first, the glory or the music. I don't know if the glory is going to bring in the music or the music is going to bring in the glory, but there's something in the works. And so, uh, but it brings us into a place of worship. That's what it's all about, worship. In, what, in spirit and in truth, which means the worship really ought to have some word in it. And I won't go any further with that. Oh, yeah, I will. I, I made a statement. We had a lady in the church a number of years ago that was really highly involved uh, in the, uh, the Christian music industry. Ended up moving, I think, out to Nashville. And uh, I think I made a statement. Sometimes I, I have to figure out how bold to be, and then after I bold, sometimes I wonder if I should have been. I don't know. But anyway, I think I made a statement in the service. Then she and her husband were sitting in the service. They went to our church for a while before they moved to uh, Tennessee, but uh, I think I made a statement, can't believe I did, but I think I made a statement, I wish some of these songwriters would get a Bible, yeah. and I thought, I probably shouldn't have said that, but it's a good word, thank you, anyway, anyway, this lady was, actually was a friend of Pastor Janet's, knew her years ago. And uh, she came up after, I think it was after that service, she and her husband came up and she said, just wanted you to know I work in the Christian music industry. And I thought, oh, great. Now, now I really blew it. She said, just I want you to know I agree with that. She said, most Christian music today is written in the boardroom instead of the throne room. And so uh, I said, I like you. Stay or stick around. But uh, I don't know how I got off on all that. But anyway... Anyway, taking time to worship like this is a, it's the way to start. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. And then just think where worship will get you. Yeah. So, and uh, like somebody said one time, the higher we go in praise, the deeper we'll go in worship. And the deeper we go in worship, the further we go into his glory. So, so anyway, so this is, uh, this is prayer conference. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so, um, you know, we're going to just cover, sir. you know, bottom line is, uh, I, I guess a, a number of years back, I thought, well, really, there's not that much in the Bible. For, while I was working on some things. I thought, well, you know, for me, there's just not that much in the Bible, uh, you know, concerning prayer. Well, I probably shouldn't have thought that because um, that was at the point oh, almost four years ago now. Uh, we started out with a daily, um, a daily uh, time of prayer, N noon hour prayer every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We just go online. Um, either from home or from the church here, we go online and we just do a, a noon hour prayer meeting uh, uh, online. And it's going all over the world. People are going everywhere. They, you know, some have to, you know, uh, log on to it later on because there are eight hours time difference or whatever. But that was almost four years ago. And, and I, you know, what we do is we start out with, you know, roughly 15 minutes of just sharing the word. Um, you know, I'll take a side trip while I'm on a side trip. <laughs> you know, 
Um, John 15, 7 and 8. Jesus said, uh, if you abide in me, now, now notice he goes on, you abide in me, my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples indeed. So he makes this statement. He said, ask what you will. I think sometimes we kind of jump over everything and just get to that place where, well, I can ask what I will, God will do it. He's just supposed to do it if I ask it. But that's not what he said. Right. He put some good Holy Ghost boundaries on yeah. that so you don't ask for ridiculous things. Yeah. Well, so he, he put a guideline on this for us. Jesus didn't say, carte blanche, I can be your heavenly butler, ask anything you want, and I just promise I'll take care of it. That's not what he said. No, he put boundaries on it, and he said, if. This is conditional. It's conditional. Things of God sometimes are conditional. Healing's conditional. It was in the old, wasn't it? Wasn't healing conditional in the Old Testament? It's conditional in the New Testament. That's not our subject. Anyway, this is going to be tough to stay on a vein here. I can see that. But, but, um, but notice what he said, if you abide in me, if you abide in me. In other words, positional. Your position is going to make all the difference in your results. Yeah, that's right. Not, well, I'm saved, I should get it. Are you saved, but are you walking with him? You stepped into him through the new birth, but did you stay in him? Through walking with him, okay? If you abide in me. If you, he didn't say if you get in me. He said if you abide, remain, stay in me, stay, walk with me, talk with me, hang out with me. Yeah. Make me an important part of your life. If you abide in me. Now notice that next part. And what? My words abide in you. Then, then, and not until then. Then you'll ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. And so, I, you know, you notice in there. So um, I said all that to say, you know, here we are in, in uh, prayer conference, and, you know, we're taking time to share on the Word. It, we could come in here, f probably from where most everybody in this room is, we could come in here and say, let's just hit it and pray in tongues for an hour and a half, and we'll, we'll go home. We'll have had a prayer meeting. That's right. But uh, uh, I like, I like uh, in fact, I'm, I, I'm pretty well bent on this generation, this move, this whatever, having uh, boundaries on what we're doing so we don't mess up again. I saw, we saw, some of us yeah. saw a move started back in the 80s, had potential to be a, a, a church world changing move of God. Prayer was, prayer, intercession, all the, the great things of prayer were, were there. And man, we, it, was, it was going so strong. And then it got squirrely. I mean, not only it got squirrely, it got real squirrely. It got crazy. Excess, extreme, and error, all three at the same time. And those folks, I, I, every now and then I get word they're still out there somewhere. I'm not sure what zone they live in. Um, what, what, anyway. But um, there was such a wonderful move, and I kept thinking, what, what made it get so bad? How did it get so bad? Well, I know, you know, I mean, I don't have to. You probably don't know anything about this. If not, you're blessed. But they had, they had uh, warring tongues, and they had, you know, hours at a time screaming at the devil. Well, that's unscriptural. You know, he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men but unto God. Yep. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Okay, so that's wrong right there. So they had all these crazy things. They'd have birthing parties. Well, you can't give birth if you're not pregnant with something. Right. You know, and they had all these things going on. I'm not using names. This, I'm, we're not criticizing anybody, but this thing got, and I thought, how did it get so far off to where it really aborted a prayer move? Okay. All right? And thank you. That's exactly it. They, they didn't bother with the Bible. They got away from the Bible. They got away from the Scriptures. If they'd have stayed with the Word, they wouldn't have got off. If they'd have stayed with the Word, they'd have found where their error was trying to get into their lives and, and so whatever. So, so we vowed, we in the church world today, we vowed we're not going to mess up again. There's a prayer. We've been praying about a prayer move for a couple of years now. And... Um, uh, this one's not going to get aborted. We're going to stay with the Word. We're going to stay with the Scriptures. And so we take some time, you know. Um, Dana's not, she's not in yet, Dana Schrader. Uh, she was in, was it last year, two years ago? And um, uh, she's just got a real gift in the area of prayer. And uh, she's a little on the crazy side, but, you know, <laughs> we've all known that. But we love Dana. And, uh, you know, but she's, she, you know, she, I think she's trying to get into, into Tulsa. I think she's stuck somewhere I'm not real sure in the airlines but but um you know but I've noticed with Dana we've had her in to minister different times and the one thing about Dana and, and Lonnie is is 
their, their main gifting is in the area of prayer. Their main gift. That's not the, the only one, but their main gifting is in the area of prayer. And uh, the one thing I've noticed every time, uh, because, you know, they're kind of wild enough that, you know, the potential might be there to be kind of wander out somewhere. I don't know. But they haven't. They stay so steady and sturdy in the, in, in, in the spirit of prayer. And, and I, but I thought, okay, how'd they do that? Well, it's pretty easy to figure out. Every time they share, before they, they'll minister the word, they'll, they'll you know, and, uh, you know, they, before they jump into a place of prayer, leading a, a congregation in, they'll always start out praying the Ephesians prayers. I, I don't know how many times I've heard Dana start out. She'll pray, she'll pray her way through Ephesians 1.15, since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, love unto all the saints, and so on. She'll pray her, I mean, it'll take her 15 minutes to just pray through those scriptures and then jump out into the place of prayer. But I've noticed the stability comes from the Bible for Dana and Lonnie both, and I know a lot of people like that. So, uh, so anyway, to finish what I was saying is, uh, you know, that uh, with not thinking there was that much on the subject of prayer, and we started, oh, I think March, it'll be four years ago, we started on daily noon hour prayer, which if you're, if you're off at noon hour and you've got a time, you, want, you can log on with us. We share about 15 minutes on prayer, and then we just pray for 15 or 20, something like that. And, and it's been almost four years, and, and uh, we haven't run out yet. I find out there's a lot more in the Bible on prayer than I thought. Prayer, prayer is not just gimme, gimme. Prayer is communing with God, and that's what the entire Bible is about. It's God and man communing together to get the plan of God fulfilled up upon the earth. So anyway, with all that, goodness, uh, with all that, you know, we did this last year. We only went through Tuesday. We extended it through Thursday. I don't see that coming. So I'm... Um, <laughs> count on many okay so so let's let's just go back through we you know our heart cry should be over where the disciples talked to Jesus in Luke the 11th chapter and said Lord teach us to pray that's kind of where I'm at right now Lord teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples he didn't say oh go you'll figure it out just throw caution to the wind throw everything against the wall see what sticks just see what you he didn't do that he went from there he he, I think he appreciated them saying, Lord, teach us to pray. Why did they say that? Because they watched his prayer life. His prayer life was stronger than any other part of his ministry. Yeah. Everything he did down here, he started out up there yeah. with the Father. So anyway, let's go back and um, let's start in Ephesians 6, 18. We said that a few minutes ago. And um, on the subject of prayer, you just you never run out of material because you've got 66 books. Okay? And... Uh, so with that being the case, there's a number of things we'll see if we get through, but um, um, yeah, we'll, we'll start here. Okay, Ephesians 6, 18, and uh, Paul writing here to the Ephesians, and you know, I mean, I don't know, but it appears to me, this is strictly opinion, I'll warn you ahead of time, I don't know, but in reading all Paul's writings to the, the Corinthians, that was the most Mm, that was the most Holy Ghost gift act of church it looks like he had. He had to write two chapters in his letter just explaining to them the operation of spiritual gifts and the prophet's ministry. They, had, you know, they, they came behind a no good gift, you know, the Corinthian church. And then you got the Philippians and the Galatians and you got all the different churches he wrote to. But it looks to me like the most spiritually developed church he had in his ministry appeared to be the, the church at Ephesus. I don't know, but it, sure, it just appears because he was able to deal with them concerning things about redemption and concerning about who we are in Christ and, and, and who, how, who we are and how we got there, and then how do we walk in that. That letter was amazing, the letter to the Ephesians. But, but you know, I've read that for years and thought, how did he get a church developed to that? If he could do it back then, we ought to be able to do it today. How did he get a, one of the churches developed to the place? Could be culture, could be a lot of different things. But if you follow Paul's writings, the one thing you keep seeing all through the book of Ephesians, everything is about prayer. And not just their praying, his praying. I think that's one of the ways he got the Ephesian church so developed in the things of the Holy Ghost. I think maybe that's the way he did it was primarily through prayer. You know, didn't have Bible to read, so anyway. Yeah, he's writing it. Now, but he says, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, um, this is what I wanted to start with a little while ago. But he says, praying always. Now, he's just talked about, you know, the, uh, 
the uh, um, armor of God. And he, he wrote back there about we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and so on. Wrote all that in there. It says, and after having done all to stand, stand therefore. There's some truths in here that will cause you to rise up and walk in victory. No, and people are not your problem. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Uh, politicians are not our problem. The president's not our problem. The next president will not be our problem. Congress is not our problem. Okay? It's we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah, it takes humans to yield to it, but if they didn't have devils pushing them, they might not yield to near, to near as much. But anyway, um, he says, uh, yeah, you know, we we'll go back through there. And then he gets, talks about putting on the whole armor of God. I've heard people say, I tell you, I put it on every morning. My question is, why do you take it off at night? But it's comfortable. Now, but he, and then he goes on, verse 18, and he says here, praying always. Now, this verse is, there, we, could, we could stand this for the next year, okay? But he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And for me, that, you know, if Paul needed to request prayer, where does that leave the rest of us? Yeah. You know, and for me, and for me, that utterance may. Isn't it interesting? You want to know how to pray for your pastor? You want to, yeah. you want to know how to pray for leadership? You want to know how to pray for him? You know, bless them, give them funds, give them, you know. No, the best thing is he said, and for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. The best thing to pray for anybody in the pulpit, primarily in the pulpit to start with, is for utterance and boldness. Yeah. Utterance to know what to say and boldness to have the backbone to say it. Yeah. Anyway, we're going all over the world here this morning. <laughs> we might have, well, anyway. Anyway. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. Now, if we just take this apart a piece at a time, praying always, praying always, praying always. Okay, so how often should we pray always? You could say praying always as far as how often, or you could say praying always or always. You could take that both directions. We need to pray always, but we need to pray always because he goes on to talk about that. Praying always... We don't want to get stuck with one kind of prayer. The, word, the, the prayer of faith is wonderful, but the prayer of faith is not going to work to get your neighbor saved. Prayer of faith is wonderful, but it's not going to pray, that's not going to work for praying for the government. You cannot believe you receive a holy nation just by using the prayer of faith. I believe I receive. I'm a revi I believe I receive a revival in Washington, D.C. Amen in Jesus' name. That's it. And then quit praying. No, that's when you have fervent, effectual, heartfelt, continued prayer that will avail much, make tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working. Okay, it's a different kind of prayer. But he says here, praying always with all prayer, praying always with all prayer, all prayer, all manner of prayer, all kinds of prayer, and supplication in the Spirit. Now, that, that, that phrase right there, in the Spirit, we could learn from that. In the Spirit. What does he mean by that? Well, you could say, Paul says, you know, if any man, you know, he talks about praying in the Spirit. Well, praying in other tongues. How, he says, if any man, uh, uh, you know, if you, you pray in another tongue, uh, you, you speak not unto men but unto God. How be it in the Spirit you speak mysteries. 1 Corinthians 14th chapter. Yeah, and so, so we know praying in the Spirit can mean praying in tongues. But you can pray in the Spirit without praying in tongues. Okay? Praying in the Spirit is not a language. It's a it's a, it's a location, okay? And so you go back in here, and he said, praying always with all manner of prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Well, in the Spirit, um, there's a realm, and I think we in the church world probably need to, we need to land on this a little more often. In the Spirit doesn't mean you're, you're lost as a goose in a snowstorm, you're walking into walls, can't see anything, or you pass out, you're in a trance. Well, you can be in the Spirit and you can get out far enough that maybe, maybe you might fall into a trance. And here, you know, that can happen. But when he talks about in the Spirit, he just means we're more conscious of spiritual things than we are natural things. You don't lose track of where you are. You, get, you don't get to where you can't drive, okay? All right, what you do is you just, you're more conscious of spiritual things than you are natural things. That's... You know, a, a good definition, you know, in the spirit. Well, you know, you might start out in, 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 to pray and you go, I, I tell you, I'm going to pray for 30 minutes. And uh, you, you get it, you, you pray for, th you know it's been 30 minutes and you look at your watch, it's been three, three minutes and 15 seconds. And you're just, you are just wore out. You go, man, I've been praying for three minutes, thought it was three hours. You know, that's what you call being not in the spirit. Okay. The other side of that coin is sometimes you say, man, I've only got a few minutes to pray, but I'm going to give, my, I'm going to give 
uh, unction to that, and you begin praying in the Spirit, and you go, man, it's pr- I know it's been at least three minutes to five minutes, and you look at your watch, and it's been uh, an hour and a half. You, you, get, you don't get lost in the Spirit, but we use that terminology, lost in the Spirit, which means you're just more conscious of Spirit things. And, you know, I think in the church world, um, um, you know, I, I've, got, I've had friends in the past, uh, you know, good friends that love God, but you know, they say, I, I, w- I, want, I want to get to that place. I see so many people get to that place. I hear people talking about that place, and I want to get to that place, and I've never been to that place. And I've just, all I can say to him is stick with it. Just stick with it. Brother Hagin used to talk about, when he, I think he prayed five hours and 45 minutes, and then all of a sudden he hit a gusher. Prayed out a move of God coming at the end of World War II, you know, so on. But he had to stay with it for quite a while. He'd pray an hour, and the devil would say, well, you just, you just wasted an hour. He said, well, just for that, I'm going to pray for two. Prayed for two, and the devil said, you wasted now. You've wasted three hours just for that. I'm going to double it again. I'm going to go six. You can, every time you mess with me like that, I'm going to double it until I pray all night if I have to. But he prayed until suddenly found his way in there. I'm going to stand this for a minute. I think in the church world, I think we need to understand it's not just a gift somebody gets. Any of us, if we're willing to invest the time uh, and pray, particularly praying in other tongues, I believe every one of us has the capacity to learn to find our way in. Find our way into what we call in the Spirit. Really, that's what he's talking about. One of the meanings, he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. All prayer is better if it's done in the Spirit. Every prayer, isn't that what he said? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. All prayer is going to work better in the Spirit. It's all going to work better if we get out of our flesh and over into that place. If we get out of our heads and into our hearts. Praying less out of here and more out of here. You can have a prayer list. You can have a prayer with 101 things you need to pray about. And you can pray about every one of them and not have an ounce of that in the Spirit. But I'll tell you, if you get in the Spirit, you'll probably pray about all those things and not even intentionally. There's just a place. You just get over there. And, and uh, you know, and I remember, you know, years ago, I remember seeing folks get, I, I, you know, I'd watch certain individuals. I thought, well, that's just a call on their life. That's just what they've got. I'll never get that. Until I prayed long enough one day, all of a sudden, I just got over and lost in that place. Could have stopped any time. It's not, it's not like, you know, you just can't have no control over it. Could have stopped at any time. But, but boy, I thought, this is wonderful. This is life-changing over in here. Just got over in that place. And, uh, uh, and I began to realize it's, it's, a, it's a choice, but it's going to take a little work to get there at the first. But the way I see it... Um, um, you know, when Pastor Janet and I, when we first started out the first, what, 20 years, uh, much of our travel uh, in the States here, we'd, you know, our first year or two, we, we drove everywhere. And then after that, we began to fly to all the places. We'd fly, pick up a rental car, and many times the, the pastor would, you know, give us directions to the hotel or directions from the hotel to the church. And uh, especially directions from the hotel to the church, and we didn't, didn't have iPhones, Didn't have Siri, didn't have GPS. We had big atlases. Boy, I miss those things sometimes. Siri's had me lost so many times. I'm telling you what, she had me on the wrong side of the Houston airport one time. And the last thing, we parked in the middle of a field, and she said, now get out and walk. I thought, no, you get out and walk. You got me here. Siri. Anyway. Anyway, uh, but anyway, we we you know we get in and and uh, we we get from the hotel to the church for the service. The first the the first one you you know you better have your map with you because you're going to a place and and you don't have GPS giving you directions. You're gonna have to follow the map or whatever directions the pastor may have sent to you or whatever. And we notice, boy, you have to follow you have to follow everything to get to the church and leave early just to make sure you make all the turns. One guy gave us the directions. He forgot one turn and we ended up in the next state. Remember, remember that one? We we pulled into a gas station or somewhere. We're looking for such and such. The guy goes, "You're in the wrong state." <laughs> We're a little late. We pull up to the church, and the pastor's going, why are you late? I thought, I'm not going to talk to you right now. <laughs> I'm going to walk in love. But anyway, but we, uh, what I'm getting to is what happens is you, first time, if you're like in a, maybe a five-night meeting, first time, you know, you better have your, your, your directions with you. 
and to get back to the hotel. And by the next night, you go, ah, well, yeah, I got this pretty good, but I made, I'm going to take the, the directions with me. Just by about the third night, you don't need the map anymore because you've been there a few times. In the Spirit, it's the same thing. All, if you just get there one time, you just get there one time, and then, but, you know, but your mind gets busy, you know, maybe things at work or, or whatever, your mind gets busy. So the next time you pray and you're, you're wanting to get there and you go, man, I want to get there, but I, I need the road map again. But by about the second or third time, all of a sudden you get used to this finding this way into that place. And there are times it's easier than others. Sometimes you just start, man, you're there. Sometimes you might pray for 45 minutes before you find that place where you step more out of the flesh and more in the spirit. But I'll tell you, it's so valuable to get there because all prayer works. And you might hit that place of being what we call in the spirit. And you don't do it all in tongues. You might hit that place and you might get to that spot and pray the prayer of faith about something in the spirit. You might pray the prayer, of, uh, you might be praying with somebody. And, 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 and during that time, you could pray the prayer of agreement. All prayer works better when it's coming out of here instead of out of here. Okay? And really... Really, the other meaning of that, one translation words it this way. Um, I couldn't tell you which one. Somebody told me about it years ago where he says, uh, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. One translation says, praying always with all prayer and supplication being led by the Spirit. How do, how do I know which prayer? To, how do I know what to pray? Do I use the prayer of agreement? There are times you just, sometimes you've, you've, hit the, you've hit a wall and you need some assistance. You've done everything you know to do. You've climbed every wall. You can talk, you've, got, you've done everything you know to do. And you just say, if I just had a little boost. And something on the inside says, call so-and-so. I've got a very good friend. Called me probably whew, a year and a half ago, something like that. And uh, said he was dealing with such and such uh, symptoms. And they were getting worse. And said, all I know is I just got a stirring to call you and ask if you'd agree with me in prayer. I said, you got it. We prayed for a few minutes on the phone, prayed the prayer of agreement. Last I heard, the symptoms were all totally gone. Wow. He'd given it everything he had. He, just, he was led to step over into the prayer of agreement. Yeah. Okay, so there's just things like this. So that's just, that's just three words out of that phrase, out of that verse, in the spirit. We could stand that for quite a while. All prayer works better if we'll take the time to get there. Okay, and it's worth the time. And again, like I said, if things are extremely busy, your your mind's busy and all that, it might take you. I know it does me. Sometimes you just hit you hit a place of prayer, and man, you are there. Okay. Other times you hit a place of prayer, and you're not there, and you're not there, and you're not there, and thirty minutes later you're not there, and you go, Lord, let's just do this later. <laughs> you know, when my head's not so busy. So anyway, but um, uh. We'll, we'll go a little longer. Um, but he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Now, now it, well, the part I want to get to, I'd like to just cover for a few minutes this morning. Um, um, you know, I think we, in the church world, uh, we probably we all remember times when um, uh, churches would advertise, well, um, you know, such and such, Monday night is intercessory prayer. Oh, Tuesday night's intercessory prayer, and you'd go to churches, and, and that's just what we all did. Every, every, we didn't say we're having a prayer meeting. We'd said we're having intercessory prayer, and that's what we always called it, and didn't think anything of it. But, you know, one day I got thinking about that, and I thought, you know, you can guarantee a prayer meeting, but you can't guarantee intercession. Okay? You cannot guarantee, you know, you can't tell people, come here, we're going to have intercession tonight because what you're praying about, you may not have intercession. You're going to have prayer. You can always pray about anything and everything, but not everything will end up in what's called intercession. And I think sometimes we've got ourselves into that place where, um, and again, we don't want to get so technical, we miss any, the, everything, but I think sometimes we've had ourselves in a place where, where, um, we, we, we've wanted intercession, and I'll be honest with you, back in the, the prayer move that was possible back in the, the uh, 80s, um, you know, uh, there was so much excess and extreme on the subject of intercession that um, I, I, I don't know. I never got a chance to ask, so I don't, it's not my place to speak for him, but I, I noticed Brother Hagen had the book, The Art of Intercession. If you can get one of those, hang on to it. I collect them, okay? I don't bring, don't, I've got a bunch of them. Don't send me any more. So anyway, but uh, uh, Art of Intercession, well, I noticed all of a sudden you couldn't get them anymore. It got re-edited. It's called The Art of Prayer, yeah. okay? 
Now, I don't mean it's wrong. I don't mean it's bad. But I just noticed there was a change, and I've always wondered. Never had a chance to ask Brother Hagin. He probably wouldn't have told me if I had. But, uh, uh, you know, but I've always wondered because right around the time it switched from the art of intercession to the art of prayer, I wondered if it's because there was so much hoopla going on about the subject of intercession. Somebody made the statement one time, said the student always goes a step beyond the teacher. And if the teacher wants the student to remain stable, the teacher has to back up a step knowing the student will just go back to where he wanted him to start with. Does that make sense? And I've always wondered with Brother Hagin having so many graduates and so many people following his ministry, I've always wondered if he had to pull it back a notch because people were taking it so far beyond all that. And intercession became, uh, it got kind of obnoxious at times because it wasn't intercession. So anyway, uh, what I want to get to with this is he says, praying always with all prayer, all kinds of prayer, all manner of prayer, uh, and what? So, so prayer, okay, and again, technical, but it's all right. Prayer really is all communication with God. It's worship. It's praise. It's, you know, it's, uh, prayer is all communication with God. Just, you know, that's my take on it. If you find a better one, you're welcome to it. But Because I've spent a lot of time trying to differentiate what is prayer supplication, intercession, giving of thanks. Isn't that what Paul wrote to Timothy about? 1 Timothy 2.1, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers. Well, did Paul not know they're the same thing? Why did he make it a separate deal in there? I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. He gave us really what I'd call four categories. And I've just spent, I've got so many dictionaries and commentaries, and, and, and really none of them agree. Okay, so you just have to kind of get to where you find a place you're comfortable with that. But the, the thing, the reason, I guess the reason I've, st I've studied so much on that, and we, if I remember correctly, I think we talked about this quite a bit last year at PrayerCon. Um, um, I believe, uh, just as a personal conviction, personal belief, I, I believe um, intercession, the real true intercession is so vital and so important that I believe that's why the devil got into things and tried to mess up intercession more than anything else back in the 80s. Didn't try to mess up the prayer of faith. We did pretty good with that. Didn't try to mess up the prayer of agreement. Didn't even really try to mess up the, uh, what we'd call united prayer or corporate prayer. But man, he went after, he went after intercession and got it all goofed up. I believe it's vitally important where we're headed I believe intercession is vitally important, so it'd be good for us to take a little extra time on this and find the best we can on really what it is so we know. I don't know about you. I want, if I know what intercession is, I know what I'm aiming for, and then I know if we've been there or if I know if we haven't been there, which throws the thought out that there are times, and I expect we'll get back here, there have been times I've had to say, you know, intercession, one author said this, that intercession is basically when the Holy Ghost takes hold together with us against something. And, you know, really, you don't have to be a spiritual genius to know when the Holy Ghost doesn't take hold with you. I've had lots of times when I've in prayer, I've had, I've prayed and prayed and prayed, finally had to say, Lord, you're not hooking up with me on this. You're not connecting with me on this. Prayed for a fellow out in, in uh, years ago in Ohio. Uh, we were doing a meeting at the church. The uh, pastor said, I've got a man in my, in my church. He's in the hospital, really. They say he's dying. Uh, would you go and pray with us about him? Yeah, sure, if you want. Absolutely. We went there, and we went in. Guy's in the hospital bed. You know, we're, gonna, we're going. I'm trying to pray for this fellow. The pastor's asked us to, and he's quoting more scripture than most believers I've been around. I'll not die, but I'll live and declare the works of the Lord. You know, and he goes, he'd go on. I mean, he gave all kinds of scriptures, but I'd try to pray for him, and I couldn't use the word heal. I'd pray, but I couldn't find myself, Lord, Lord, I thank you for he, 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 he. I thank you for doing something for this guy. I couldn't get the word heal out. And finally, I mean, and we prayed and prayed, and finally, finally, I just, under my breath, because the guy's listening, under my breath, I said, Lord, you're not taking hold with us on this. Why, cannot, why can we not pray the prayer of faith with this guy? For He's already quoted more scripture than most preachers can. I mean, how come we can't get that out? And the whole, I mean, inside the Holy Ghost says you can't because he's not going to get healed. He's going home. He'll be home within a week. He's coming on over. And his, the problem is he's quoting all the scripture and letting everybody know he doesn't want to get healed. He wants to go home, but he can't say that because his family will get mad at him. 
And I, he, he went home in about a week. But, but see, I had, to, I had to look inside and go, Holy Ghost, how come you're not helping? You're the helper, but you're not helping. You know, you're not doing your job. Yeah, I'm doing my job. You're not doing yours. You know, it's like, but, but anyway, anyway, um, I'll go in circles right here. Okay. Praying always with all prayer, all kinds of prayer, all manner of prayer, and supplication in the Spirit. Now, notice he separates prayer and supplication. Prayer is all kinds of communication with God, best I can tell. Otherwise, why would you have prayer and supplication? Supplication appears to be, again, it depends on what dictionary you're reading, but supplication appears to be where you're going to God with a specific thing, okay? And, you know, you can have a lot of supplication. The Holy Ghost will always hook up with you on supplication. You can pray in tongues for a friend, a neighbor, a politician. You can pray in tongues for somebody, and the Spirit of God will always give you unction to pray in tongues. But He won't always take hold together with you against that situation. He'll give you utterance to pray, but He won't always connect with you to go after that and help pull that thing through. Does that make sense? Yeah. He'll all, he's always there. That's what He does. He can always help, always, he'll always help you pray, but He won't always connect with you on that. So supplication, and again, we don't want to throw the all the technical terms out here, because I don't know anybody that's got all, all the answers on this. All prayer seems to be all communication with God. That's our life, okay? Uh, supplication appears to be when we're going to pray about, we, we pray the prayer of faith about ourselves. Supplication, usually it's when we're praying for someone else, another person, another situation, uh, another nation. Uh, supplication is when we're going to the Father about a specific thing. I mean, we're, we're, we, got, we got our guns loaded. We're going after a certain thing. We're going after God. And so you can do a lot of supplicating. You know, like somebody said, maybe what we should have done instead of calling them intercession, me, intercessory prayer on Monday night, maybe we should have called supplication prayer at, on, on Monday night. Because you can always supplicate. You can always do that. You can always take scriptures and go to the Father. You can always take verses and go to the Father. You can always begin to pray in other tongues, and the Spirit of God will always give you utterance. That's what He does. But there's this other place, supplications, prayers. Now, what did He say talking to the uh, Timothy about praying for leaders? He said, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession. He made a difference between supplication and intercession. And I think because we didn't know really what that was, most of us, I had never taken time to study and see if there was a difference. Didn't even notice that it was listed differently for a long time. When I finally did, I noticed that uh, intercession is listed in a different capacity. And um, I'll put the cap on this. We'll pick, we'll pick up a later time because we need to pray. But uh, intercession is really, it seems to have two, two separate um, descriptions, maybe, uh, Intercession, first of all, it, it re intercession is defined as taking the place of another. Well, I can pray all I want for somebody. It doesn't mean I'm going to take their place. I can't give me that place in somebody's life. I can't anoint me to step into their place. I can't anoint me to take their place. I can pray for them. I can supplicate for them. But I can't step into a place where I'm in their spot. Best description I've ever heard of that is how many have ever heard of a man named Phil Halverson? Most everybody has. Amazing man. God, give us more of those. Give us more people that have that, that, that uh, understanding, that, that, that life of prayer. But um, we knew Phil and Fern pretty good, pretty good. We, we had some opportunities to pray with them. Loved those people. And, uh, but he, uh, <clears throat> something I heard, I, I never got a chance to talk to him, so the validity of it I can't really tell you, but I've heard it from some pretty reliable sources. Um, that he was in a meeting somewhere and um, had a heart attack in the service. Well, they called the ambulance and got the ambulance in there, and they put him in the ambulance, and they put all the, all the stuff on him, all the wires and everything, you know, the oxygen. They put everything on him. They got him in an ambulance. They get him, take him to the hospital. They put him out of the, take him out of the, he's having, a heart, he's having a heart attack. They take him out of the ambulance, put him on a gurney. They're rolling him down the, the hallway. They're going to take him in to run all the tests and probably do maybe a stint or open heart. Or, they don't know what they're going to do, but the man's having a heart attack. And they they got all this stuff connected to him. And they're rolling him down the hallway of the hospital on the gurney. And so all of a sudden, he sat up, rolled his legs around, got up, said, that's it, I got it. 
intercession was so strong on him in that case that not only, not only was he praying for somebody, he didn't even know who, not only was he praying for somebody, but he, there was a place of intercession where God enabled him to step into that place. He experienced what they were experiencing. He felt what they were. And once he got to where he tapped into what they were having and feeling, he, he stepped into that place of intercession when he got there somehow while he's laying on the gurney. And I don't know, he wasn't laying on the gurney, uh, groaning, travailing, and speaking in other tongues. So you can intercede without groaning, travailing, even tongues. You can intercede by just God putting you into a place of somebody like that. And somehow you can make a connection and pull them out of that. Okay, there's a lot of that. I don't know. Maybe you don't know a whole lot more about than me, and that's, I hope so. But first part of intercession, you could say, is taking the place of another. Okay? Um, oh, we could go on and on with this. Okay, I've seen folks get saved because somebody in the crowd, not praying in tongues, not even filled with the Holy Ghost, somebody in the crowd all of a sudden felt so lost, felt so lost, and they'd gotten saved. It was, it was a bunch of young people in my hometown. A bunch had just gotten saved. This one young person had gotten saved. And I mean, God instantly delivered them from drugs and alcohol. I mean, instantly, brand new. You talk about a new creature in Christ. They went to a meeting, and all of a sudden, during the altar call, this guy's preaching, you know. Um, it's, a, it's a denominational thing, not a full gospel deal. He's preaching up there, giving an altar call. People are coming up there. And this person all of a sudden gets up out of their seat and starts responding to the altar call. And all the rest of us are sitting there going, why is she? What? She's saved. Why is she going to the altar call? She walks her way down to the front, gets to the front down there, funny look on her face, gets to the front during the invitation. And then a number of other people come forward. And uh, afterward, afterward, we're all asking, well, what, are you, what are you doing up there? We know you're saved. Yeah, I know I'm saved, but all of a sudden I felt so unsaved, I didn't know what to do. I had to respond to that altar call. I felt so lost, I had to go respond. I just felt so lost. We said, well, whatever, I don't know. Anyway, this kid comes up, this like 12, 13, 14-year-old kid comes up, says, just wanted you to know I was sitting back there, and God was stirring me to go get saved. And I said, God, if that girl over there goes to the front and gets saved, I'll follow her up. <laughs> said, you went up there, and I followed you up, and I got saved. I'm a new creature. Intercession. Yeah. Didn't pray in tongues, didn't even pray. He said, I just felt lost as a goose. I, I felt so lost, but just went to the front because intercession. There's so much about it we don't know. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, uh, hmm. we need to take some time to pray. But we, you know, who knows? We may extend this to next year. I don't know, but. <laughs> Did he? You're causing trouble back there, <laughs> as usual. But it's a good thing. You're welcome to. But um, um, yeah, there's some other things I really want to get covered. We'll we'll take some. We may get. I, we'll see. We'll see. Another morning this week. We'll take some time to get back to this because I really felt like the most important thing we could cover in these mornings is to, to cover intercession as best we can. We're going to know it all? No, but we're, we, it'll, it'll open the door for us to begin to learn some more things. Okay? There's some things, negotiating prayer. We need to learn some things about, we need to be doing some negotiating prayer concerning our nation. So anyway, so let's just take some time, and let's just, let's stand to our feet, and let's take some time. We're not in a rush. I'll guarantee you they're not going to close the restaurants, especially Freddy's, okay? They're, they're not going not gonna to close the restaurant. So let's just take some time to pray. Um, and uh, we, we won't go on into the afternoon. We've got, we got more time. We've got more, you know, more days. And we're going to be praying at night, okay? I really believe we need to be doing, mm, we'll do some teaching, some sharing, but we're going to do more time for praying. This is a prayer conference, not a learn about prayer, but a prayer conference, and you learn as you pray. And so we'll be doing some more of that. But um, just for right now, let's just take just a little bit of time. And, uh, and let's, uh, the way, again, like everything else, we'll take a little time, we'll jump in here, and we'll see, uh, we'll see if the Spirit of God connects with us, or if He says, go to lunch and come back later. Say, would He tell you to go to lunch? Oh, I think He does me a lot. But anyway, <laughs> let's pray. Father, we thank You in the name of Jesus. We just, we just come into into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. Father, we, we take some time to pray corporately. 
There's just nothing like united prayer. And Father, we just seem to be stirred back to this other part about praying for our nation. Doesn't mean we're the only one important. Doesn't mean we're the only one worthy of being prayed about. But we just do know while we're here, we've got boots on the ground. And we've got a stirring in the name of Jesus to pray for America. Pray for America. Pray for America. Dear Father, mm, I know there's a dark cloud out there. I know you even said through the mouth of one of your prophets back in 1987, you said there'd come a dark cloud out of the uh, Atlantic. And you said there'd be a dark cloud out of um, um, uh, D.C., out of the nation's capital. And, and evil men would yield to that. And it would go across the nation. Well, Father, we know we're at that place. I don't know if we're at the first time at that place, but we know we're at that place. And not to criticize anyone in, to, in particular, but we do know that dark cloud has come out of the east. It's come up from the eastern seaboard. We know that. We've prayed about that. Best we can understand that dark cloud has come up from the east. And it's swung over into D.C. And, uh, and there are evil individuals, men and women, that have yielded to that. There are bunkers full of bad people. There are folks in bad locations doing bad things with bad plans. There are folks even in other nations that have raised up an army of folks in America. They're heavily financed, and they're, they're buying them signs, and they're buying them rooms, and they're buying them buses, and they're doing all that to get people. And it's all this stuff coming out from the east, but it landed in D.C., and it's for some reason, somehow, for some people, I don't understand it, but some evil people with evil plans and evil results and evil unction, evil everything, have yielded to that dark cloud. And as a result, it's gone across the nation. It's, gone, it's engulfed the media. It's engulfed Hollywood. It's engulfed the entertainment industry. It's engulfed the banking industry. That, uh, that whatever that is, that dark cloud... Well, I know, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, dear Father, it's those four spirits that we've been, uh, we, we've been privy to know about, which would be, which would be, which would be, uh, 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 it would be social, it would be financial, it would be political, and even a fourth one in there. Those things, it seems like they have been yielded to. And there are, oh, there are things, there are folks that have bad plans, bad plans, bad plans, bad plans. And it's begun to spread. It's going to the states. Father, the, there are certain states and certain cities that have had horrible things take place. There are cities that we call them sanctuary cities. There are cities that are run by folks with evil intent. And, and, and there's more shootings and more killings and more robberies and more carjackings. They've got, uh, I think, Maryland, where they've had more carjackings than, jackings than, than they know what to do with. And, and that dark cloud, it's all started as these spirits that have come from the east, they get into D.C. and then begin to spread out across the nation. And as they do, darkness comes into the cities. Darkness comes into many. D.C. is engulfed in darkness. It's engulfed in darkness. Well, what does that mean? It means the church better pray. It means we better use our authority. We better do something about it. <clears throat> Those spirits that have engulfed our nation, well, they can only go as far as we let them go. They've got to work through humans. They've got to work through humans. Those spirits, those spirits in the ministry of Jesus, they said, are you come to torment us before our time? And he's about to cast them out. And they said, let us go into the swine. They were in a location. It was their location. And they had to have flesh and blood for, for expression. And they'll take a pig if they can't get a human. And our Father, there, there are folks, there are spirits that have taken pigs. They've taken folks with bad ideas and bad plans and bad, uh, bad morals, bad everything, but they've had to have somewhere to give that expression, and <clears throat> so they've, they've located humans that they can give expression through, whether, whether it's entertainment or, or, or finance or political, they've, they've found humans. And so what we do is we pray for the humans that they'll yield not. And we don't, but now, now we take a little side trip here, dear Father. There's something going on. We pray about Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv. Mm. Tel Aviv is the Lord. Do much de Christamandiga. Do lavor bista calande. Do vistaro. Obrigado. Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv. Oh, malade gadeste ke. 
Come the Iron Dome, Iron Dome, Iron Dome, Iron Dome, Tel Aviv, Panista, Del Vido Roscolate, Darista Bacalame, Zizgabanabe, Dizgabanabe, Del Vidanama, Lana Gaste King. Oh, Malagala Vida Barvara Moscalistica, Dushta Barvista, Barvidano, Rota Bella Sadagistica. No, 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 we're not going after people, we're going after devils. Iskalanda Menanda Gedestake, Inigo, armies driven by devils, the Iranian. Emanustake, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Yemastukolo, Elevidana Menan Gedesta Kelestake, Oh, Balada Gede, Suskamanda Gedestake, Invidorostake, Invidagola Dostes Command, Destoya, Pravara, Batarmi, Dolore Bascala, Dolore Bascalane, Dolore Benagusha Pravascalande, Invidacora, Oh, Pakanistas Command. In you go, oh, Dubai, 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 Dubai. Watch Dubai. Keep your eyes on Dubai. In Dubai, Iligadostakeli. Regroup. There's a regrouping. A regrouping in Dubai. In a Kalarmi Dasta. In a Kalususa Bajaladi. Oh, Pregata, Pregata, Pregota, Pravada, Gedestaka. In a Dalarmi Dasa Kalistaka. Oh, Pravadaskinistaka. Ah, Pravadeskinista Kalistaka. Ah, Brigata Dula Soda Vida Danskinistaka. Hmm. And Vida Kolo Bravara Garaski. Oh, Marvida Mraste Kisiska Staske. De Kolo Tosa Paradesh de Kalistaka. In Vida Go. In Vito, in Vito, in Vito Colosita Bastani. In Vida, in Vito Go. Or Ishtabe, it's a Bragasta Kistanaka. In Yipa Kolo Sosta Bajere. So, 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 the ten toes, into the ten toes, into the ten toes, so, 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 the Roman Empire, Roman Empire, Roman Empire, Roman Empire, Roman Empire. Amani Degade, revived, 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 the best Gnostic, at least the king, the Manusta Kale, I need to come by DJ Gabasi K. And you bought out of a baragade? Do lose a bedaga, do lose a do lose a bastamande. And with the Golotola Mandagade, and another day they get days to Kate, a pair of basuske, France, 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 France. Oh, Maya du Soleil de Gade, do Bosale. Bosale Salagadeste, Toulouse Paladeste, Kelly, Marseille Sabo, but Paris at Calasuda Ganande, and Vidagola Dosta Calista K. Ara et de Lota et de Boda Sola K. de Vida Manasana. You know Dostico, up into Brussels, up into Brussels, up into Brussels, it's Galota Besh Ganande Gade, there of Strasbourg Sunday Day States Commande Gadista K. Oh, oh. Pacate se de staca. And the dulo do bodo vede stepa. Do colo ste pachanistaca. Do colo revede scalande gadistaca. In the border of Vera Bara Salacati Siskanastake. There we are, Buchara Parvidana. Not but not put not por against a calistake. Yeah, no manandago. But big back here, back here, back here, back here, back here. Back here. Oh my, 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 my. Oh, par, it's a, it's a basura gadani. <coughs> it's a basura gastan gedet scalate. And vidagola bravara da daina da da daina banda gedistake. Daina tele vida basa gustaka. And the bochali tanaka. And the bochali tanaka sanda gastana gedet vidan madastaka. And you begula for road sekarabashke. And a Parusia, Perusia, 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 Castellana, Gedesta, Kistan, Gedesta, Kelly. And Vidicolo Dora, but Perusia Gavazi Bassanini. And Vigolora, Bedana, Gashkini, Stand, and Destanye. Destance, Destiny, Destiny. Emanundigo, but a Galadista, Kaladiga. Ah, oh, churches, churches, churches. Here in America, 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 America. Oh, yes, will you not do it again? 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 America, Salagadista Castamandi. 
Then Bakulot, oh, brave Escalant, oh, brave Talan, the Gedistica. And yet, oh, Scalaratsky, it's got a Vardana, Berenge, Gedistica, Stani. And Baragori, Bravara, Vidan, the Gara Sitskanastic. And a Dudushkanani, and a Dudushkanishkana, Bravara, Vidaskalitica. Icaro, with a roast the Bachkane. In Baravara Vidas the police, there but in a but the police, but the police. No, but we lift up the police. Yes, the police, the police is gonna van the manangede. The police, oh mananda days, eh, Sabaska Nista, Kistan Gedeistake. Ah, David Diva La Baraske Nista, Kisan Manan Gedeistaka. Oh Mananda the Gedeistake. Invade DC, invade DC. You are upon the Gede. You have, we ask you to invade DC. Invade DC. Ananande the Videis Days Kaban Gede. Gotta change what you need to change. Do what you need to do. Maya Dis Kalanda Gede. In Vinakoro Bravara Vedan. In a Kolo Soda Vedi Manashan Gedeis Days Kabani. You the Dolore by Darvi Arvos to Kolo. Yeah. Ah, yes. My, my, my. Yeah. The Banin de Gede. Apostles and prophets. Apostles and prophets. Apostles and prophets. <coughs> Apostles and prophets. Envy de Golado. Holy Ghost pastors. Holy Ghost pastors. Holy Ghost pastors. Holy Ghost pastors. Ah, my lady Gadastake. Pastors with the word and the spirit. Holy Ghost pastors. Oh, Melana Vides Beladega. Nervidaraba. Millions, millions, millions. Ibazales de Keta. Millions of Beradas Aridas de Kay. Millions of Paraguche, Ragar, Vidana, Galeri, Gadansk, and East of Kistani, and Viracola de Stakele, and we demand a Gadestaka. But more than anything right now, more than anything right now, we ask you raise up, raise up a prayer generation. Raise up a prayer generation. Raise up a prayer, what, what we, we'd call a prayer move, a prayer revival, a prayer outpouring. In a Dolora Barra Basilista, Dori Bejale Grace to Bascade, Arista, Arista, Arista Pascalande, Arista, Ori Bechale Grades to Poscane, and Vidolo Vrogla Bragades to Kesusa Bashkanani, or support, Gadaska, Lista, support, 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 oh, support, 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 support. Yeah, I'm a need to get days to kill us to get days to cake support. Ah, name a noon to get days to cake. Angels, 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 and we don't know to kill us to cake. Heavenly support, heavenly support, heavenly support. And did you don't move it, laddie? And you judge your brother get days to cut and your job, which gets get us to cut. The northeast. No, 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 no. South, southeast, 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 southeast. No. My Viado Roske de Stica. Emma Oda Galede get expo. Oh, my. There's that bus say somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. Lone wolves, lone wolves, lone wolves, lone wolves, lone wolves. It's going on to be done then. Gedeis to case to Balan to Gede. Then we do to go. Them and expose, 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 shine in the light, shine in the light. Pray to do stika. Yeah, delay, chikaday, stipalastika. Yeah, delay, delay. There's something, 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 something in the works. But a delay, a delay, a delay, a delay, a delay, 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 a delay. Eh, delay, the gay, the bay, the go stika. Into the Lord of Baravara, Vara, Silis, Kadistika. Saliza Baravari? Oh, Saliza Balavari Varatas Genistica. I don't know, Lord. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know what that is. So I'm not going to try to guesstimate. I'm not going to try to figure it out. I don't know what that is. But I go to Soda Benan Gedeistake. Yananunda Valeba Deistake. And the Tolo Roho Roho Tolaski, the Baja Great David Dorbesh can eat together. And the name of Adam Rose, Oliver Baraveda, Garmida and the Vascanist. Oh, Prevar Vasque, oh, Brigada Suskana, oh, Kali de Vescanos to Kalistica. 
in your jira to the bar of your arm today yeah uh-huh I I don't I don't even know what that means I, I don't know what that means I don't know what that means yeah 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 I, what is that what is that yeah 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 the church world the church world the church world is in dire need of fresh leadership church world is in I I, I get that I get that to a degree. Mm. My, my. But you pulled Moses out of nowhere, backside of the desert. You pulled David out of nowhere, backside of the desert. You pulled Gideon out from by the, behind the wine press for fear of the Midianites. You, you pulled the Apostle Paul out from killing Christians. You've always been able to reach back and bring folks out of mediocrity and take them to the forefront. It just seems like. And I could be wrong, Lord. I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to try to interpret that. But it just seems like, it just seems like you're about to bring some fresh leadership in some, some locations, some, some locations in the kingdom. Going to bring some folks out. Some folks out. My, my, my. Yeah. John Lake came from nowhere. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, but it's still Simone Gedeistika. Yeah. Yeah, and I get that. I, I That much I do get. That much I do get. Maybe not understand, but I get it. I, I, I got most of the case to go to see. Thank you. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. Oh, my knee knee to be done, bro, to Ah, yeah. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Intervene. We ask you to intervene. 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 And, our, and, our, and, and Lord, our heart cry. Our heart cry for America our heart cry for the church in America, give us another chance. Give us another chance. Lord, give us another chance. We somehow lost our momentum. We somehow lost our momentum for the nations. We lost our momentum. We lost our momentum. But we got a generation coming up. Ah, I would, I would stake about anything on that. Generation coming up don't care about money, don't care, they're not afraid of anything, don't care about, no, there's a generation coming up. Only you can say, only you can raise them up, train them up, and, and ship them out. Only you can do that. But a heart cry, Lord, give us, an, give America, give the church in America, give us another chance. Give us another chance. Yeah, we got, we got uh, self-centered. Uh-huh egotistical. We let certain things get into our psyche. But just as easy as we let it in, we can run it off. So we say, Lord, give us give us another chance. Give us another chance. Give us, a, give us churches that can raise up a dozen people and say, we'll pay the bills, you just go. Visas will come. Passports will come. Tickets will come. Opportunities, locations, doors. We ask you, Lord, give us, give us another chance. Oh, my, my. 25, 30 years ago, oh, America was a launching pad. 25, 30 years ago, Tulsa was a launching pad. It was a launching pad. Let us launch again. Let us launch again. Let us launch again. We don't all have to go, but we all better figure out a way to send. Yeah. Launch, 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 launch again. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we thank you. It's a privilege to pray. 
And, and our heart cries the same thing, Lord, teach us. Teach us to pray. It seems we know so little. It seems we know so little, but yet you gave us the teacher. So we're going to look to the greater one in the days to come to teach us. Teach us. Oh, we'll make mistakes? Sure. We'll mess up times? Sure. But yet we got the teacher. Hallelujah. Therefore, now no condemnation. We've got a teacher that will raise us up. Hallelujah. Equip us and ship us. <laughs> and we thank you for it, dear Father. So we give you thanks. We give you thanks, dear Lord. Thank you for a prayer army. Thank you for a prayer army. Give us a bunch of Phil Halversons. Give us a bunch of Jeannie Wilkerson's. Give us a bunch of uh, 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 give us a bunch of Marie Woodworth Edders and Amy Semple McPherson's and 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 uh, Sister Grace. My my my, Mama Vicky. My my my, it's a little sarcastic. Lord, give us, mm, yeah, give us an army. Give us an army. Give us an army of leaders. If they lead right, they'll train up a whole bunch of us. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name, Father. Hallelujah. Well, let's give him thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. 